Welcome back to my Mega Wang 2000 Turbo Edition hardware update. I've been busy on the Commodore 64 Games Memories and Demos Peak video series recently, but I've also had some time to work on my Mega Wang. And I had this crazy idea to expand the scaled sprites hardware capability. Now, the previous scaled sprites hardware uh, called Sprites 2.java in my Java emulation implementation, which uh, implements the logic of the hardware that gets produced. But basically it expands upon this model of uh, writing data into RAM, which contains the registers for the sprites, but also the sprites definitions. Uh, it, it's actually very similar to the model that was used in the emulation, but also the emulation which was emulating the hardware implementation of the audio hardware uh, to store large amounts of data in separate registers and then process them. So the scaled sprites for hardware idea is basically to provide the capability for super scaled sprites. So the current scaled sprites hardware operates on a 32 by 32 fixed pixel a tile definition for a sprite and then scales it up and down with a with a 8-bit scale value. But I had the idea of implementing any width practically in any any height scale sprites hardware. So this involves rendering to the full frame buffer as opposed to uh, rendering the scaled sprites for every scan line. So this means having a full frame buffer instead of just a scan line buffer, which the Scaled Sprites 2 layer currently uses. I'm just picking out uh, just picking out an image here from the Afterburner arcade version, which was in the main emulator, actually. I just wanted to pick out an extra character screen layer and add it to the demo. So after adding the command line to uh, calculate the extra palette entries for this image, it's just a character screen. So I'm just calculating uh, tiles width and height with eight and eight and outputting the palettes, then loading the palette back in again and then processing all, the, all of the other sprites. So this scaled sprites four layer uh, uses a lot more RAM because I found out that actually it was getting very, very much harder to source um, the eight, the five volt through hole um, SRAMs. So I'm changing the design now to use a surface mount and that allows me to use, say, for example, a one megabyte RAM. Anyway, so I've added the uh, characters layer to the emulation and I'm converting that new image file as well. But I'm the emulation allows me to plug and play all of the hardware layers. So I've got the sprites, the tiles, the mode seven graphics in there. I've got the audio hardware attached. It allows me to attach uh, Commodore 64, 650, 2650 CPU and the memory map. And there we go. That's what we get now is that we've got a rather nice uh, character screen overlay on top of the Afterburner logo with its rotating scale sprites board balls. So you can see in emulation, now the emulation is uh, cycle exact with the intended hardware design and it need, the emulation needs to be cycle exact with the intended hardware design so that I can accurately gauge the specifications for the hardware. But the debugger that I can attach to the Java-based emulator here gives me feedback on how many sprites there are uh, submitted to the sprite hardware, how many uh, scale sprites were rendered in the last frame, whether or not it reached the end of the list, uh, whether or not there is a buffer swap triggered. Uh, the debugger also allows me to step over or step into uh, the source code for the 6502 CPU. So I can step over the source code here. I can step into, say, for example, the title draw E routine. And then that allows me to see that it submitted the next highest sprites. The highest sprite submitted so far is number three. 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then at the end of that sprite, it's now highest sprite is now submitted to be 4. So there are two buffers. There's an off-screen buffer and a currently rendered uh, on-screen buffer in the intended hardware design. There are also two buffers for the sprite registers for the sprite list. 
So while one sprite list is being calculated and then presented to the screen for rendering, there is another sprite list which, which the CPU is allowed to access without uh, contention with the currently rendered sprite list. So th this is very much different to all of the other display layers where all of the other display layers, the CPU has to time the access to the V-blank so that when there is nothing being displayed in the V-blank, the CPU has to do all of the register copying over and everything else. And that was even for the scaled sprites 2 layer. So the scale sprites 2 layer, while it's rendering each scan line, the CPU isn't allowed to access its, its sprite registers. Whereas this sprites 4 layer design allows the CPU to use utilize the whole frame to submit sprite data for the next frame that you that the CPU will will tell the sprites hardware that it's ready to start drawing and then it will let the sprites hardware access the new buffer on the next frame. So there's a there's a double double buffer arrangement here. So the CPU can actually take more than one display frame to calculate sprite data and then have the sprite hardware render it. So the sprite hardware continuously draws from its off-screen list, but it's continuously calculating to an off-screen buffer and then presenting the new buffer, presenting the on-screen buffer to the video hardware to actually get rendered. And then it constantly flips between the off-screen buffer and the on-screen buffer. So there's two double buffered things here. There's a double buffered list and there's a double buffered screen display. And for the sprite hardware, the the intention is is that it will render all of the sprites uh, in the off-screen buffer, but the on-screen buffer is being cleared as the pixels are extracted from the on-screen buffer and then displayed. So using this de using this cycle accurate debugger in the emulator, I can see I can step each frame. I can put a breakpoint at the beginning of main loop that I've, I've just done here. And basically the breakpoint is at the video weight V blank uh, subroutine call. And I can step through and I can see with my cycle accurate emulator and debugger that uh, for some of the frames, when the airplane is taking off and there's this great big massive aircraft carrier sprite, which is zoomed in um, more than two times, I think, uh, at least, then uh, it it fails to reach the end of the list for uh, rendering. But it's only doing that for a few frames. And then once once the sprite hardware uh, sprite culling, so it has a screen edge detection. So if a sprite is too far off the bottom of the screen or off the right hand edge, then it will trivially reject that scaled sprite and it will move on to the next scaled sprite quite quickly. Uh, it, it then after a few frames, it can reach the end of the list. So I can see here during the takeoff sequence that the highest sprite submitted and rendered was sprite 95. So the CPU, the 6502 CPU, which is the emulated CPU on an emulated Commodore 64, is sending over at least 95 sprites uh, for that frame, for example. So the CPU is actually utilizing the uh, RAM expansion hardware. And if you have a look at the previous couple of videos uh, I'm talking about and demonstrating the RAM expansion hardware along with the rest of the hardware board stack as well. But it utilizes the RAM expansion hardware to have a lot of perspective tables, multiply tables. So the CPU 6502 doesn't have to do the multiply. The CPU can ask the RAM expansion very quickly for the result of uh, an 8-bit times a bit signed multiplifle or um, a perspective transform for a for a 2d point or a 3d point so a 3d point you know 2d uh, x and y coordinate plus a z coordinate gives you 3d point right so it, it does it asks this RAM expansion for the result of a perspective transform and that means that the cpu plus the RAM, external RAM expansion can actually calculate quite a lot of um, you know, perspective correct sprite positions with the sprite scales and the relevant uh, screen XY coordinates. So I'm just stepping through the code here 
the cycle accurate debugger allows me to see you know the precise state of the hardware and what the hardware is doing uh, the debugger also allows me to step into the apu code the advanced processing unit code which deals with uh, it's it's a bit like the amiga blitter it runs a reduced instruction set which waits for certain um, horizontal and vertical positions on the screen and then it triggers memory copies and register updates and stuff like that in the hardware as well the apu in this demo is actually being used to update the mode 7 registers so that the cpu does not have to wait for the next v blank to update the mode 7 registers that's so that the mode 7 twisty rotatey scrolly screen in the background which is using the mode 7 display layer uh, has a horizon which is synchronized with the rotated landscapes and the rest of the player sprites. So the complexity for this Sprites 4 display layer, I don't think is going to be uh, too much more complex than the largest board that I've built so far, which is this audio board. So this schematic here has four copies of this uh, register uh, logic block here and that's because it has four sampled voices uh, two left channel and two stereo right channel voices so it needs to maintain all of that state and all of that complexity in, in produces a pcb which is about it, it looks like this so it, this was a version of the audio board which was using um, through hole components and if you have a look at my previous videos about the audio board then you can see that working with the Commodore 64. Uh, that board is 350 by what was it 310 roughly uh, millimeters in size so 35 centimeters by about 31 centimeters it was a huge board and I don't think the scaled sprites 4 board will be uh, larger than the audio board in fact I think the scaled sprites board Scale Sprites 4 board is going to look a little bit more like this kind of complexity. So this is the Scaled Sprites 2 board. This is the Scaled Sprites board that uses an entire scan line to calculate Scaled Sprites instead of the entire frame to calculate Scaled Sprites. So this is... The, so, so the Scaled Sprites 4 board is probably going to be a little bit bigger than this perhaps. So that's 200 millimeters by 210 roughly millimeters, I think it was, or 20 centimeters by roughly 21 centimeters. So I think the Scaled Sprites 4 board will be a little bit bigger than Scaled Sprites 2, but not as large as the audio board. And then, yeah, we get a lovely functionality like this, hopefully. I'm pretty uh, confident in how this emulated uh, design is going to transfer over to a hardware design. I'm basically intending to take the uh, Scaled Sprites 2 board and then enhance it so that it uses the full frame buffer for its calculation rather than the scanline buffer. So actually some of the logic will be simplified because it doesn't have to flip over the logic on a scanline basis, it just has to flip over the logic on after it's rendered a full screen. Uh, the the two, so instead of double buffered scan lines, it will use a double buffered frame buffer. Uh, the only extra complexity really uh, is the Scale Sprites um, screen edge detection and uh, rejection uh, clipping. Basically, it clips scaled sprites so that it doesn't bother rendering pixels that are too far off the edges of the screen. So this emulation framework allows me to set the CPU time. So this current CPU is set to be about one megahertz. Uh, if I set the CPU to be faster than one megahertz, so if I could add a second CPU, like a second uh, 6502, then the frame rate would uh, increase because the CPU on the six five in C64 wouldn't have to do so much work and could offload the work to a second CPU. If I had one, if I added a second CPU to the RAM expansion, then you would have improved frame rate. But I think with the emulated CPU set to about one megahertz, which 
matches the one megahertz CPU clock speed on, in the Commodore 64, then I think we can maintain a frame rate of between 20 and 30 frames a second. Uh, much like this Demo 9 does, that Demo 9 actually runs at 60 frames a second on a real Commodore 64. You can see that in one of my previous videos where I look at the Scale Sprites hardware and demonstrate Demo 9. So while uh, the Afterburner demo is CPU limited, uh, the, the limitation here, say for example in the Shadow of the Beast demo, which you can also see running on the hardware board stack and the Commodore 64 on one of my previous videos. Uh, this demo is not CPU limited. This demo, the CPU is spending most of its time just waiting for the next frame because it's just sent over all of the data during the V-blank. Um, that demo nine, the one with the uh, scaled sprites coming towards the player, uh, that demo nine spends a lot more time in its uh, CPU execution loop instead of waiting for, for the V-blank. But even then, that one runs at 50, uh, 60 frames a second. So I think, you know, this should be fine. I think this should be doable. It should, it's it's certainly calculating and sending over a lot more data than Demo9 did, but uh, this Afterburner demo, I, I think it would, I think it would run at 20 to 30 frames a second on a, on a PAL C64. Actually, it doesn't matter if the C64 is PAL or NTSC, because the C64 synchronizes with the display hardware, which runs in NTSC 60 frames a second. Anyway, so thank you very much for watching. I just wanted to give a very quick update about what I've been working on with Megawang 2000 Turbo Edition hardware. If you like my crazy hardware hacky electronics videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel and adding a comment in the comment section below. Have a great day, evening or night, wherever you are.